Welcome to our Dramatic Beauty Portrait Tutorial. In part two of our tutorial, we're going to take a look at preparing our images for retouching using two different methods. The first method will utilize uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. So we'll use the virtual copy feature in Lightroom, um, make any changes that we need to, and then export as layers into Photoshop. The second method will export the raw file into Photoshop and then use Camera Raw to create any adjustments that we need to. So let's take a look at what we have. I've already gone through and uh, done the long process of sorting through my files, creating my pics, which always takes longer than it should, as you guys probably experience as well. Um, I have my five star pics here, and then the greens are the ones that I really like and that we'll be retouching for this tutorial. This first image is actually already done and available for preview. Uh, you can see it on F Stoppers as well as on our Facebook page, and I have the links below in the comment section. Uh, let's take a look at this photo here um, and also just to let you guys know what I do when I bring all these files in is I bring the first one into the develop module. I'll create some minor adjustments just so I can see the file, um, how it will look eventually give me more of a realistic preview to make a better judgment. But when I'm ready for retouching I actually want to uh, undo most of that and remove a lot of contrast. I actually want to flatten that image out. Uh, the reason being is that I have access to the raw information at this point. I want to open up shadows, uh, see as much as I can, because it's really easy to add contrast in post-production. Going the other way isn't quite as easy. Um, so let's go into develop and let's take a look at what we actually have done to this photo. Okay, so just a little bit of exposure bump. You can see our histogram. There's a lot of information in the shadows, but a lot of that is that it's a lot of dark hair, darker background. Um, I've added some contrast just for the preview. I have opened up the shadows a little bit, done some minor adjustments to the tone curve. And then more importantly, so you guys can see, I have added my lens corrections. So I've assigned the profile for this lens, and I've also changed my uh, color profile to camera portrait. Um, and so what we're going to do, and let's go back to the group because I don't want to undo my changes because we'll uh, use them for the next um, option, is I want to go into photo, create virtual copy, and you can see the, uh, the shortcut here is the command ditto mark or command quotation mark, uh, whichever way you want to call it. It's the key in between the semicolon and the return key. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a, a copy. And I'll change the color of this one to purple, just so we know this is the one that we're going to be changing. I'll take it into develop. And just make some changes. So I'm going to take the contrast out. So we don't want to go too flat. We just want to open things up. So this is where we were. And we'll go about there. Open up the shadows a little bit. So I think about 40 and minus 10 should do it. And that looks good. Go back into group and create another copy of that one. So for the first one, what I'm doing is focusing on uh, her face and the information that I want in there. And so for the second one, what I want to do is focus on the hair. So this allows me to have um, different copies of the same file and pull out information for different sections. Sometimes I don't do this at all. Sometimes the image doesn't call for it. I really want you guys just to see that it's an option. Uh, sometimes you'll create two or three copies. So maybe one for the face, one for the hair, and one for the eyes. Um, I'm just going to create two copies, one for her face and one for the hair. And so for the hair, I'll just open up the shadows a little bit more. So you can see there's a little bit more information in here. Might bump the exposure up just a tiny bit. We don't want to go overboard. So a tenth, and there we go. So let's go back into group, and we have our two versions. So I'm hold down shift so I can select both. And if we go into photo, edit in, scroll all the way down. Now there is an extra option that wouldn't have been available previously when we had one file selected. So open layers in Photoshop. The other way we can do this is control, click on the file here, and the same thing, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And so I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll open it to Photoshop. Okay, so once that's done, we want to take a look at what we have. So our top layer is actually the, uh, the face layer. So I'm going to drag that down, change it to 
main. So now that's my name, main file. And the second one is going to be the one for the hair. So I'll change that to hair. I'll add a mask to this. I'll hold down option when I do it so it fills in with black so I don't see any of it. And then I can just paint in wherever I want to fill in or see a little bit more information in the hair. So opacity 100%, flow 5%, and with a soft white brush, I'll just lightly paint in here. I don't want to do too much. Just want to fill in the darker areas. Okay. So you can see we're just adding a little bit to the darker areas of the hair. And, and that looks good, and I think that's it really for this one. We're ready to go. So I'll hit Command, Shift, N create a new layer, command shift option E, create a stamp visible. I will delete these because I don't need them anymore and now I'm ready to work. So let's take a look at our other option. I'm going to remove these virtual copies, at least remove them from this group so we don't see them. And I'll go back into my original. Now I don't need to go into develop for this. I can go directly into Photoshop and we'll do most of the work there. So again I can either go into the menu, photo, edit in and I'm gonna go down to open as smart object in Photoshop you can also do the same thing if you click on the file here control click edit in open as smart object in Photoshop so this will open as a smart object and you can see the difference here it has the smart object uh, icon at the bottom here what that means is that we can double click on our file and we have access to camera raw um, using the raw information from the original file. So you can see any adjustments that I've done in develop, it's the same here, they're carried over. My profile, um, the lens profile is assigned, the color uh, profile camera portrait is already assigned. So it brings all that in which is great. But now whatever I want to do I can do that in camera raw. So I can bring the contrast back down to negative 10. I can open up the shadows. So the same things I, I was doing in Lightroom, I can do that here in Camera Raw. Really it's a, it's a preference, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, so I think that looks good. I'll hit OK. So it's made that adjustment. And now I can hold down Control, click on that layer, and I have the new Smart Object via Copy. So this is now theoretically doing the same thing that we were doing in Lightroom. Now in Lightroom, it's a virtual copy, so it's not creating an extra file, um, just an extra code file that uh, tells Lightroom how you would change the image. Um, this is actually creating um, another layer, so you'll see your file size actually get larger when you do this. So new smart object via copy. Um, you can now see it doubled in size, so it is a larger file that we're working with. And I can go in here and now make my adjustments for the hair. So bump the exposure a little bit, open up the shadows even more, and hit OK. So now this has done the same thing, and, and you can theoretically continue and make as many copies as you want. So um, you can create as many virtual copies as you want in Lightroom when you're doing the first method. You can create as many smart object via copy um, layers as you want when you're doing it in Photoshop. Just be mindful when you're doing it in Photoshop, it will uh, make your file size larger. So you know, if we're doing two, three, four copies, it, it might not be a big deal. If you get into creating a lot of copies for some reason, you may have to be mindful of your file size. So that's all we need for this. I'm going to go ahead and change the names again. So this will be hair. This will be main. I'm going to hold down option, click on my mask. So I get a layer mask that is black, so that way it's already hiding everything. Doing the same process, so I have a white brush, as you can see here, uh, soft edge, hardness all the way down to zero, and I'll just paint in where I want to see a little bit more information in the hair. Okay, so let's see what we've done. All right, so it's a small adjustment, but it does help us see a little bit more. Uh, things are a little bit more evenly lit now, or they appear so. So I'll create a new layer, create my stamp visible, and you can see I'm at the file size 660 megs, but I'm going to delete these smart objects and my file size will shrink uh, significantly 
back down to 206. So we're now basically at the same point um, in either file. Same file size, we've done the same thing. Um, our files are ready to be retouched. So at the end of the day, this is a preference, whatever you prefer. I've gotten really used to this method of using the smart objects. Um, it does have the drawback of the file size. Um, so really, whatever you guys prefer, uh, the end result is going to be the same. And then we can get into our skin retouching in part three.